In this video, we're going to look at completing the square. If you've got a quadratic such as x squared plus 8x plus 18, it's possible to write it in a different format using completing the square. That other format can be very useful, particularly for solving quadratics or finding out where the minimum or maximum point of a quadratic graph is. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to see how to go from a quadratic to the other format by doing a process called completing the square, and we're going to see some of the ways in which it can be useful. Now notice if I had x plus 4 all squared plus 2, well if you had x plus 4 all squared, that would be x plus 4, x plus 4. And if you were to do FOIL on that, you would get, expanding it, x squared plus 8x plus 16. And notice if you add 2 to that, you would then get the x squared plus 8x plus 18. So what we're now going to do is we're going to see how to go from the quadratic back into that format. So, first of all, because it's x squared, you put an x down, and then you look at the next term, so the, the x term. And because the coefficient, the number in front of it is 8, you half it, you write plus 4. If it was plus 6x, you'd write plus 3 in the bracket. If it was take away 10x, you'd write minus 5 in the bracket. And then you put squared. So what we've done is we've done the first part. We've put our x plus 4 and then all squared. Now if you were to expand that, as we've seen, it's x squared plus 8x plus 16. Now the next thing I would recommend doing is looking at the number here. So because we've got 4 squared, that's 16. What we're going to do is we're going to write minus 16. So you always take away this number squared. That way, if you had the bracket, the x plus 4 squared, you'd just be left with the x squared plus 8x. Now, we have wanted 18, so we just write plus 18 on the end. And then you simplify this, so you're going to get x plus 4 squared, and then minus 16 plus 18 would be plus 2. And that's it, we've done completing the square. So to recap, we had x squared, so we put x. Then we looked at the number in front of the x, which was 8. We halved it and put it inside the bracket, and we wrote squared. Then we take away that number squared, because it's 4, that squared is 16. So we take away 16, and then you just put the number on the end. And that's it, that's how you do completing the square. Let's have a look at an example. So let's complete the square for x squared plus 6x plus 1. So first of all, because it's x squared, you just write x. It's 6x, so you're going to write plus 3, and put that in brackets, squared. You're then going to uh, take away 3 squared, so that's to take away 9, and then put on the plus 1. And then, whenever you simplify that, that's going to be x plus 3 squared, and minus 9 plus 1 is minus 8. And that's it. So if you were to have x plus 3 squared, so if you were to expand that bracket and take away 8, you would get the quadratic that you started with. Let's have a look at another one. This time we've been asked to complete the square for x squared minus 4x plus 10. So again, because it's x squared, you put the x down. And then because it's minus 4, you're going to do minus 2 squared. Now, minus 2 squared is 4, so you've got to take away 4. So you always take away what number that is squared. So minus 2 times minus 2 is 4, so take away 4. And then put on the plus 10. And then just simplify this, so you're going to get x minus 2 squared, and minus 4 plus 10, that's 6, so plus 6, and that's it. Okay, and let's then complete the square for this one. Now, this one is a bit trickier because we'll, we've got a 3x. So we're going to get x, because it's x squared, you get x, and then half of 3, well, you tend not to write 1.5, let's write 3 over 2, because, well, 3 divided by 2, and then squared. Now, we're going to take away this squared, well, 3 over 2, well, 3 over 2 squared, is equal to 9 over 4. So we're going to take away 9 over 4, and then we're going to add 4. So we're almost done. So that's going to be x, x plus 3 over 2 squared. And then we just need to work out what this would be. So that's minus 9 over 4 plus 4. Now let's change our 4 into quarters. So that's minus 9 over 4 plus 4 would be 16 quarters. And then minus 9 plus 16, well that's 7, so it's going to be plus 7 over 4. And that, that means that it would be plus 7 over 4. And so that means that our answer would be x plus 3 over 2 squared plus 7 over 4. And that's it. Now let's have a look at why it's useful. So we can solve quadratics by using completing the square. So let's have a look at solving this quadratic. So we've got x squared minus 8x plus 15 equals 0. So let's do completing the square first of all. So x minus 4 squared minus 16 plus 15, and that equals 0. So then that would be x minus 4 squared, and then minus 1 equals 0. 
and then that would be x minus 4 squared and then equals if you bring the minus 1 over you're going to get then get that's equal to 1. So now what we're going to do is we're now going to square root both sides and you've got to be careful here because if you've got something like this x squared equals 25 the answer isn't just 5 the answer is 5 or minus 5 so whenever you square root that you get x equals plus or minus 5 because 5 squared is 25 and minus 5 squared is also equal to 25. So whenever we square root this we're going to get x minus 4 square root on the left hand side equals plus or minus 1. Now if you've done uh, the quadratic formula you will see that plus or minus sign before and then we just add on 4 so we're going to get x equals 4 plus or minus 1. Whenever I add 4 I tend to put it in the f at the front like so. So then you're going to get x equals well 4 plus 1 is 5 or x equals 4 minus 1 which is 3 and that's the two answers x equals 5 or x equals 3. So you can do completing the square to solve the quadratic. Now it's really useful particularly whenever you haven't got a calculator and you need to do a question where you're going to have thirds involved. So let's have a look at an example like that. So you're going to have let's do completing the square so x plus half of 6 is 3 squared take away 3 squared that's take away 9 and then put on the plus 1 and that equals 0. So that would be x plus 3 squared minus 9 plus 1 is minus 8 equals 0. Bring the 8 over, so x plus 3 squared equals 8. Now square root, so you're going to get x plus 3 equals, remember it's plus or minus. Now 8's not a square number, so it's going to be root 8. Uh, you can simplify that third if you want to. Um, I'm just going to leave it in this format for now. And then take away the 3 from both sides. So you're going to then get x equals minus 3. I tend to put the number at the front. Plus or minus root 8. And so that means that the answers would be x equals minus 3 plus root 8. Or x equals minus 3 minus root 8. So our two uh, particular answers. Now just to show you that also remember root 8 if you've done thirds can be simplified the biggest square number that goes into eight is four so it would be root four times root two and the square root of four is two so that's two root two so you might also see in an exam that answer being x equals minus three plus two root two or x equals minus three minus two root two so that's just another way of writing that answer. So that's what completing the square is, and that's why it's particularly useful whenever you've got questions, um, quadratics perhaps, where you want to solve it, and the answers are thirds.